In this video, I will be explaining you the remaining of Egorov's theorem. The first part is in another video. So, you, you can go and check out uh, in measure and in integration playlist. Okay. So, here as you all, uh, as I explained you in that video, uh, what you are doing to prove Egorov's theorem, you have to prove some other lemma first right so this is what that lemma so here and that in that video we have proved that lemma till that lemma because uh, we use the result of that lemma uh, in this Igorov's theorem so before writing the proof of Igorov's theorem you have to write the uh, proof of that lemma you have to prove that lemma because that lemma statement you can see these two okay in uh, in the beginning of Egorov's theorem what you will do is you will apply some other values for this eta and for delta okay so if you want to do that you have to prove this lemma first right then only you can write uh, in the proof of Egorov's theorem uh, put delta equal to put eta equal to right so, without that lemma, how can you put, uh, write this line? Right. So, you have to write that lemma. So, here what you are doing is put delta is equal to epsilon uh, by 2 power n plus 1. In this, in the place of delta, here you are going to substitute uh, epsilon by 2 power n plus 1. And in the place of eta, you are going to substitute eta is equal to 1 by n. Okay. So, here... When you substitute like that, you will get this. Here you have m of e minus a. Here uh, you have to keep one thing in your mind. In the place of delta, you are going to substitute epsilon by 2 power n plus 1. So there you can see n, right? So here when you are substituting this value in that result, you will put n for uh, this a also. You will put this n in the suffix of a also. Okay. So, that that statement will change like this. Okay. I will tell you here this on a for all n greater than or equal to n and m of e minus a less than delta. Right. Here you have the statement there. You can see like that. But here when you write, when you are writing, you will put instead of a here, here you will put a n. Okay, that's the only difference here you are making. So, okay, that's how you will get this. And now after writing this, you have to define something. That is, you are defining, can you see that? Define capital A is equal to intersection N is equal to 1 to infinitive A N. That is how you are defining the value of A is equal to intersection of N equal to 1 to infinitive A N. That is how you are defining. Now, you are applying E e difference on both the sides so that you will get this and after that you will take measure on both the sides so that you will get this and now um, what you are doing is by d morgan's uh, rule okay you uh, by here you will learn the same sorry i missed that page okay Okay, okay. I will explain. So, here uh, by using a property of D Margins, okay, D Margins property, what you can do is intersection will come to this side so that it becomes union. Union n equal to 1 to infinitive, then uh, E difference a n. This is how this will change, okay. And this can be written as when union comes to this side by a proportion these changes are happening when you bring this union to outside becomes less than or equal to summation n is equal to it becomes union becomes summation so write the remaining now in the place of m of e difference a n we have a value right m of e difference a n we have a value just substitute it here it is less than right so that is why here less than or equal to in this step becomes less than is that clear now bringing this epsilon outside so that you will get this and then you are splitting this 2 power n plus 1 so that you will get this bring this to this side so that you will get this and now summation n is equal to 1 to infinity 1 by 2 power n value is 1 okay so that epsilon by 2 into 1 so that you will get less than epsilon by 2 
course okay so you have proved this sorry you have proved this m of e difference a less than epsilon by 2 you will use this to say m of e difference f less than epsilon say okay okay to prove now we are going to prove fn converges to f uniformly on a first first you are saying fn converges to f uniformly on a okay so to say that what you are doing is you are choosing 1 by n not less than epsilon now in star we have star right star equation this is star in this star what you are doing is a star implies you are writing that star but in the place of 1 by n you have choosed yeah, 1 by n naught is less than epsilon right so in the place of n you are here in the place of n you are putting 1 by n naught that 1 by n naught will be less than epsilon because you have choose like that for all n greater than or equal to n and this x belongs to a n naught okay now since a is the subset of a n naught okay a is the subset of a n naught you can write like this in the place of a naught here you are putting a x belongs to a that is the only difference you make from this step to this step now therefore from this this is uniformly converges definition format so that you can say fn converges to f uniformly on a and you are writing rewriting this again so if these two conditions are there then by a theorem uh, what will happen is there exists a close to set f that f will be subset of a okay and m of a difference f less than epsilon by 2 these two lines you are writing because if these if these conditions are there then by a theorem they there exist a, by a theorem this will happen okay that is why you are writing like that now uh, you have to find e difference f right we have e difference a but we want e difference f so what you are doing is we have we are using triangle inequality m of e difference f less than or equal to m of e difference a plus m of e a difference f so I'll substitute this values and you will get m of e difference f less than epsilon hence the proof thus the theorem comes to an end okay i hope you understand thank you